in the past week, we shared a word together. My impossibilities require intimacy. And we shared how there's a, a desire in God's heart to draw me into intimacy. And, and we saw how that Jesus taught his disciples from John 14 and John 15 on the reality of, of the father being a, a vine dresser, being a, a, a farmer, and Jesus being the vine and I'm a branch inside the vine or attached to the vine and how I could bear fruit. But it required intimacy. So this morning I want to share with you on the renewing of my mind, how to change my thinking in the light of the requirements, the kingdom's uh, desire or the kingdom places upon my life. Um, and I'm privileged to be in your house. Good morning. Uh, I, I trust that you and I will share a word that will change our hearts together. In Matthew 4, 17, Jesus challenges the disciples. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And repent is the Greek word metanoia. And it means with my mind, met is with, no, noia comes from nous. With my mind, I am required to do a 180 degree about turn. I, I was going on my way to Cape Town and now confronted with the reality of the kingdom, I changed my direction. And I changed 180 degrees. I was on my way there. I turned back. And this means that there has to come a total change of thinking. Um, so opening myself up for the manifestation of the kingdom requires a whole set of new thinking. And, and we closed off last week by saying, as it is in heaven, so it be on earth. And it's not like that on earth at the moment. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that you, some days, you experience something of the kingdom, something of heaven. And then some days, <laughs> let's, let's be honest, ESCOM and the uh, Polokwane Municipality place, those two companies place a huge, um, demand on my faith and my love and my my new thinking so as it is in heaven so it be on earth is a required transformation that i'm moving toward and, and i want to help you this morning and i'm the, during this week i was meditating on the whole thing and my own mind was so captivated by god's plan for my life first of all i just want to share Two or three basic things. First of all, I need to renew my mind on Holy Spirit. I need to change my thinking on the manifest presence of Holy Spirit. You see, when if, if we should come from a Pentecostal background, there would be the reality that, oh, Holy Spirit gives us an awesome time on Sunday morning. We can dance and sing and, and have goosebumps and and yet that's right, but that's a small, small compartment of the whole Holy Spirit manifestation in my life. Let me share with you. In Judges 6.34, uh, uh, Moses wrote, he says, So the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And the Hebrew word there talks about a hand fitting into a glove. And, and it's like Holy Spirit was like a hand going into the life of Gideon. That's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We said last week, we owe the world, we owe our community miracles. We owe them the manifestation of a loving God. The Spirit of the Lord came inside Gideon and filled him like a handful of glove, fills a glove. And, and, and so God could use Gideon. God could make Gideon manifest heaven on earth. You see, the presence of God in this moment in Gideon's life, it's like the presence of God is hosted in a human body. We have a demand from the world placed upon God. And you know what? He sent us to manifest that presence. I need to understand Holy Spirit 
is a person. I need to understand. Benny Hinn wrote a book many, many years ago. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Can I say that? I've said it many times before, but can I say it to you this morning? I need to change my thinking. When I wake up in the morning, okay, I have my wife or I have my husband or I have my children or I'm alone. I have a dog maybe. But here's the most important person that I wake up to in the morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What would you have us do today? So, so can I say that repentance means I change my mind on Holy Spirit and me walking this life together. The, the, the word for comforter that is translated comforter in our Bible is the word parakletos. We spoke about that last week. And, and here's Holy Spirit. He's called to come and walk parallel with me. Kaleo means to, to be called and, and, and para is the word parallel. So Holy Spirit is called to walk alongside me. And I woke up this morning with a picture of a boy. Uh, if he picks up four two liter Cokes from a fridge, he cannot carry it. It's impossible for him. But if he puts it in the in the bag uh, the, the the bag on wheels that he walks with to school it's an easy job because this this little carrier is like paracletos he, he is called to walk alongside and so holy spirit lifts my burdens he makes life a possibility for me the second uh, issue i want to raise with you this morning is the renewal of my mind concerning God as my father. Now we've spoken many times about this, but let me, let me take you to one scripture this morning, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 18. I will be a father to you. You shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And he's quoting from the Old Testament, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 18. I will be a father to you. And, and Matthew 6 verse 6, when he te taught the disciples the the, the, the disciples pray he said to them he says pray like this our father we're included in a family and we have a father we have a dad now I've shared this many times before but the reality is father is the beautiful Hebrew word Abba Abba and I will put a picture on the notes for you. And, 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 and the picture is simply this. It's Aleph, the first letter in the alphabet, Aleph, which, which refers to an ox with a yoke. And the second letter in the, in the word Abba is Bait, B in, in English, Bait, which refers to house. And it says this, the ox that bears the yoke is in the house. In other words, Father is not somebody out there. Father wants to be in your house. He wants to be where you are. He wants to be in the, in the presence of your life. So I will be an Abba to you. Matthew 6 verse 6, our Father. We're included in an incredible relationship. Now, now I need to change my thinking about God as Father. Let me share a little bit from the life of Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey uh, Dahmer was a, a man that was caught young age. He was like 30 years old. He was caught and they found 17 bodies in his freezers. He killed 17 young boys and he, he, he could have killed many more, but that's the, the proof that they had. And, and so Jeffrey was locked up in prison. Uh, he was found guilty um, and um, somebody wrote a book, The Monster, the true story of Jeffrey Dahmer. And, uh, and here's this monster locked up in prison. And, the, and he was only in prison for a little while when one morning the guards came and found him thrashed to pieces. Somebody beat him up so badly he died. His whole body was, was broken in pieces. 
And so we can say, yeah, he got his, uh, uh, the penalty for his sin. He, he deserved to suffer like this. But then the truth came out. Three months before his death, there was a pastor ministering to Jeffrey Dahmer. And, and this pastor led Jeffrey to the Lord. He confessed his sins to this pastor. And he asked the pastor, how could I change my life? The pastor led him to Jesus. What a man of God. And so by the time they killed Jeffrey, who was a son of God, and he discovered the father heart of God for him as an atrocious criminal. He is the one who bears the yoke in my house. Can I tell you a, a second story? Uh, a boy and a girl, 12 and 10 years old, go and visit on the farm. And so uh, early morning they go out to play on the, on the farmyard and there are some geese. And um, Yanni, the boy, had a, a, a slingshot with him. And so... He said to his sister, he said, Sonny, I can kill any goose I want. I'm so accurate with this thing. I can kill any of these geese. And she said to him, I dare you. And so he let go and he hit grandma's beautiful goose and the sting dropped dead. And so Yanni took a spade and <clears throat> buried the goose behind a, a fence uh, that nobody could see the goose. But you know, in, in, during this time that they were on the farm, Yanni had to wash the dishes after every meal. And so this, uh, this morning, they go into the house and, and, and Yanni went behind the scene and he went to grandma and he told her what he had done. And she said to him, Yanni, I saw the whole thing happening. Thank you for your honesty. I, I saw you killing my goose. My heart is sore, but come here. And she hugged him and gave him a sweetie. And so it came to lunchtime and Sonny, Granny said, Yanni, will you wash the dishes? And, and Sonny said, when they were alone, she said, Yanni, I'm going to tell Granny about the dead goose and, and you're going to wash the dishes from now on. There's no no dice about it i'm telling you you're gonna wash dishes from now and he said to sonny you know what sonny i told granny she knows about the goose and you're gonna wash the dishes and, and you know the enemy comes and he manipulates us with lies and he tells us about our guilt and our inferiority and so we need to learn that god is our father and the third thing i want to say I need to change my thinking about myself. Jeffrey Dahmer changed the thinking that he had the, the absolute disgust he had with himself as a homosexual murderer. He had to change that thinking. And I've got a picture of a cat looking into a mirror and seeing this huge big lion. I need to my, see myself. And Yanni had to see himself and, and, and discover who he really was after honesty came through. He could see himself for who he really was. And he was set free from the bondage, the bondage of washing dishes. Can I change my thinking about myself? Let me share some scriptures with you. I sometimes, and, and, and Pat helps me with this, I sometimes have an internal dialogue. And, and I find a lot of fault with myself. And Psalm 139, David says in verse 13 and 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He came to the conclusion that although he, his father didn't like him, his mother didn't like him, his brothers didn't like him, in the, in the, in the face of God, he saw a new David. He saw the real David. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Can I change my thinking about myself? Romans 8, 14. The Spirit Himself bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God or that we are children of God. Holy Spirit comes to, to reiterate in my hearing, in my ears. You are not some kind of an outcast. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Romans 8, 29. Same chapter. Romans 8, 29 and 30. I'm predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. 
God chose me before time that Jesus and I would look the same. You see, the plan for Adam was that he would manifest God on the earth. Jesus, the last Adam, came and he manifested God. Now, Paul says in Romans, he says, you know what? I'm predestined. I was chosen before the foundation of the earth to resemble God on the earth. Ephesians 2.10, he says, for we are his workmanship. He crafted us together to look like him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 I, if, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. I, I was recreated. I, somebody put on Facebook this afternoon, there are two dogs inside me and they fight with each other. No, no, no. I'm a new creation. There are no two dogs fighting inside me. I'm a son of God. Yes, I have memories. And, and when and temptations come my way, and that's why I need renewal. I was not left to fight this thing on my own. I was left with a confirmation that God is my Father. Secondly, Holy Spirit walks alongside me and I am a new creation. I am not the old Corne anymore. I want to bless you with this. I want to bless you with a, with a reality of a renewed thinking, thinking. Romans 12 verse 2 says, transform your whole life by changing your thinking about yourself. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, oh God, help me to see who I really am. Help us as a family to understand who we really are. You are changing us from glory to glory by, by the transformation of our thinking. We are praying this morning that you would help us to change our stinking thinking. In Jesus' name, my Father. Amen.